There is a king seated among us. Let every heart receive him now. Where there is praise, he will inhabit. There will be grace and mercy all around. And every gone through anything in your life your full redemption is to come my friend as a believer while you have been redeemed as salvation you are forever secure in Jesus Christ I want you to know physically you're going to be redeemed too spiritually you are new in Christ and you are alive in him but I want you to know what the rest of this song says it won't be long we will be their church. Hey, Freedom family and friends, this is Pastor Larry. So good to be with you today. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining in on our Bible study. And we're going to be in Romans 15 today. So if you want to go ahead and find that in your Bible, on your digital device, your phone, your iPad, whatever you got, that'd be great. You're going to want to follow along. We're talking about walking in love and how we treat one another and what is best and more Christ-like and how we should uh, absolutely conduct ourselves when uh, it even comes to things that are not completely lined out in the Bible and aren't specifically mentioned, we're going to walk in love and uh, we're going to be mindful, not just of ourselves, but we're going to be mindful of others. That is the Jesus model. So I'm glad that you're here today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and uh, comment. We'd love for you to comment. Do you have a prayer request that you'd like to share? You can do that, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. But I want you to know that we're studying right now through the book of Romans. You know what? We only have 
one more chapter to go. And then we're going to wrap things up with the book of Romans. I'm not sure what, where or where we'll go and what we'll be doing after that. And uh, But we're going to study God's Word. And there's a reason for that because we want to learn the Bible so we can live it. And that is a great thought I just want you to embrace. And as a believer, if you know Christ, if not... Uh, we would love to introduce you to our Savior that we talk about and study about that will change your life forever. But we study the Bible as believers so that we can learn it. Well, what is the purpose of learning? Just so we can become um, prideful, so we can become self-inflated? Absolutely not. We are doing it so we can actually live what God is asking us and what is expected of us as a Christ follower? How can you know? How do you know what to do? And how can you know what not to do? And how do you get right when you're not right? When you're wrong, how do you get right? How do you stay right? Well, the Bible gives us so much instruction, even for our lives today. The Bible is so relevant and practical, and it is timeless. That is true. It uh, is the inspired Word of God, and we know it is a preserved book. That means through all ages, through all, through all time, it is preserved. And so that's why we learn it, so we can live it. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be in Romans chapter 15, and uh, maybe many of you are at lunch uh, right now, and uh, I respect that time. Thank you for taking a little bit of your peanut butter and jelly sandwich time, and uh, break. Uh, you may not have long. Many of you watch this afterwards, or you catch it even on another day that is most convenient for you. Hey, I understand that. I just want to say again, thanks for being here. Look at Romans chapter 15. We're going to get started. Hope that you had a good weekend, and I trust and pray that as a believer, you were in church. You say, oh, pastor, I'm not in church physically. I understand, but were you collectively a part of the body of Christ gathering together? Maybe it was online. Good for you. I'm glad. But when you're ready and when you're able to health-wise and those kind of things, we sure would love to have you be a part of it in person. Something about on campus just can't be translated as best through a camera or through video. And so I hope that you can, but either way, glad that you're a part of us and we consider you part of our church family. So thanks for being here. Romans chapter 15, look at verse one. We then that are strong, Paul says, ought to do what? Ought to bear the infirmities, bear to put up, hold up, right? Bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Well, they are very contrast, aren't they? When we please ourselves, I'm sure not thinking of you. When I'm only thinking of me, I'm not thinking of you and others. And so contrast there and one has to be done in contrast to the other. Paul says, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. We know that word means to build up. Edification, to build up. Why should we be thinking of others? Why should I walk in love? And why should I live in a way that pleases and honors the Lord? To build people up. That is what Jesus would do. Yes, speak the truth. Yes, correct things that are wrong. But it was for the betterment of the individual. Look at verse 3. For even Christ, here's our example. He is our supreme example. Please not himself. Well, that is the message in, in its entirety, isn't it? Right there. He says, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written, Paul says, were written afore. They were written before. And written for what? For learning. Are you learning anything? that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. My friend, if you are going to a church or some collective grouping of individuals that clarify themselves to be a church, whatever that may mean to you, that church is the body of Christ. If you aren't learning the Bible, if you aren't growing in peace and hope, if you aren't growing in love, well, there's two things. One, you may not be applying what you have been taught, and that is 
self that needs to be realigned. But there is a second part of that, and that may mean you are not in a place that actually teaches God's Word. And both are very important, and both of them need changing if that is true. And so just be mindful of that. Why do I get in the Bible? Why do we study the Scriptures? Paul just told us here. Now the God of patience, so we know where it comes from, right? Oh, I'm going to practice patience today. Well, good for you. I want to do that too, but I often fall short as probably as well as you. Why? If I'm trying to do that and pull myself up by my own bootstraps, if you will, it doesn't work. My flesh in itself cannot produce that. But the God of patience and consolation, comfort, grant you to be like-minded one toward another. How am I going to become more thoughtful of others? How am I going to get better at this and become more like Christ through the scriptures? Because God will grant this. He will grow us in this area according to Christ Jesus, the end of verse 5 says, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, right? Boy, there's something wonderful when believers come together and testify about the goodness and greatness of our Savior. When we sing songs and when we study the Bible together, we're really rehearsing what we're going to do in heaven forever. What is that? Worship, glorify God. This is a great practice time. So is your practice going well? Hope it is. He says, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to we're going to glorify the Godhead, the Trinity, God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. And we get to do that here. I glorify God when I'm thinking of you and when I'm not doing things that would be as a stumbling block to you. And when I do things that are not offensive to you, most certainly not on purpose, okay, um, it pleases the Father when we do that. Then verse 7, Wherefore, receive you one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Say, so what does all this mean? It means we got work to do, doesn't it? We can be short-tempered. We can be quick um, in our speech. We can be hasty in our judgments. We can be quick-tongued and without thinking, and we can do that. Um, we're human. This takes work, and it is a refresher course. So think of that. You know, you may be learning something new. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how long you've been saved or where you are on your Christian walk, even if you are saved or not. But I do know this. Not every person is at the same place, and we all have room to grow. So this is how we see this, all right? So we know that chapter 15 really is a great summary of all of chapter 14. Now, if you've missed chapter 14 and you're just jumping into Romans 15 with us, great, but you really need 14, all right? So maybe you can go back, and they're all by date and day. So um, you can go back and listen and watch any of these on our Facebook page. You may have to scroll down quite a bit, but they're there, all right? And uh, we plan on leaving them there for you. So Paul said, as we pick up where we left off last time, even Christ did not please himself. In other words, Christ wasn't self-absorbed on this earth, right? Jesus, the Bible says, came to serve, right? He didn't come to be served. Now, I'm sure people helped him and served him. Of course they did. But we're talking about that's not that wasn't the main header. That wasn't the main subject line. Jesus didn't come and just so he could put his feet up and let everyone just worship him, you know. He came, and this was an example to all of us and to all that were around him, how he was a servant. And the fact is, it's not even, there's no greater display of this, is it, than Jesus giving up of himself, Jesus going to the cross and laying down his life, not for himself. He did not have to die for himself. Jesus died for sin and sinners who sin. That's why we're called sinners. We sin. 
Jesus did not die for himself. He gave himself willingly. Is there any more of a selfless act than when you give of yourself, when you serve at your church, when you serve your community, when you serve your neighbor? Yeah, you don't always have to do it at a church building. The church is so much bigger than an address. Thank goodness and thank the Lord. Amen. So we are talking about a building We're talking about that you and I are the building. We are the temple of Christ. So no matter where you are, if it's at Walmart, doesn't matter where you are. You are a representation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you serving Jesus by serving others? That's how it works. And so Christ took on the reproaches of us, the world. The Bible says, Upon himself. That's what Paul just taught us. Verse 3 says the reproaches of his enemies, right? And so this kind of gives us the thought surely the strong believer. And what I mean by that, the more mature believer, I don't know, but if you've been saved for any length of time, you should be growing constantly in maturity. Not that you are fully matured, because none of that won't happen for any of us. None of us will attain that until we get to heaven when we are fully redeemed. Yes, we are in spirit, but fully redeemed, all right, in body as well. Um, when we are fully redeemed, right, we will be ultimately strong, but there are some stronger Christians than others. And the Bible says that we ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. I mean, I know it's easy to bear up your closest friend or your family at times, but what about our bre- what about our brothers and sisters in Christ, right? Those who seem to be weaker in the faith. Sometimes we get to the edge of this and we back off. We're because we become intolerant or frustrated with those who at times don't act just like us. Well, you know, you haven't always acted like you do now. There were probably at times where you were frustrating to others. And I'm sure that we all can still be that way. What is the point? The point is, is that we're mindful not only where we are spiritually growing, but that we're also trying to do and live a Christ-like life that is also helping others to mature in their faith. Paul said, for whatsoever, remember what he said? He said, for whatsoever things were written aforetime. That's what he said in verse 4. He said, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, What was written in the scriptures was written for our benefit. And Paul is quoting passages. Every time again, you see the words as it is written. What is that? It's going to be a reference to another scripture. And Paul says we're written for our learning. What learning? Well, verse 4 says, comfort, patience, excuse me, and comfort of scriptures that we might have hope. So, patience, comfort, hope. Do you think that the world needs those today? The answer is yes. That was a rhetorical question. We've always needed those. We need patience. We need comforting. We need consolation. And we need hope. Guess what? God is hope all those things. I know that you and I are not all those things at times. Of course not. But these are things that we ought to, are trying to learn to do and become, become more like these things. You know, the Bible lets us know that the word comfort appears in a lot of passages, and I've already given a lot of those to you, and I did that last time, like from, and I'll just quote 
the reference, like John 14, 16, and 26. You can look those up. And even Barnabas was called the son of consolation or comfort, okay? Incredible things, but God is all these things. How can I be patient with someone? I can assure you that that will be tested at times. Don't you know? You know that very well. Well, then how can I be patient when at times, and I'm successful at it, when I wasn't prior, it's God at work. When I yield to the spirit of Christ in me and yield to his strength, I can be patient. I can. It's not an impossibility. I I can be even comforting. That's right. Some people are good at comforting others. Some are not so much, right? And so whatever area that you're needing to, to work on or change and grow in, God is the answer and the place where that happens. So it's important to note, though, if you look at verse 5, where it says, now the God of patience, it's, in, it's important to know that, that he's all these things. And then at the end of verse 5, according to Christ Jesus, verse 5, I mean, if we were to clearly understand what's happening in here, it's to be like-minded one to a, toward another. So who do I look to? Who do I follow after? Jesus Christ. That's who. That's who we follow. This is our teacher. This We're the student. We're the disciple, if you will. What is a disciple? It's a learner. It's a pupil, okay? It is a student, right? A disciple. Well, if you aren't learning or following, right, or studying under someone, then you're not a student. You're not a disciple. Well, I'm not following Jesus. Well, then you're not a disciple of Jesus. So, and sometimes, you know, we name churches that, or people just kind of flip those names out. Well, hold on. Words mean something. They carry volume and weight. And so when we say that, it literally means that this is what we're striving to do. This is who we are. This is what we want to be. And so when we do that, Paul is saying, like-minded one toward another, that is Jesus. Guess what, my friend? When you are like-minded one toward another, walking in love and putting these things into practice that the Bible is teaching us, you are being like Christ. So good job. Keep that up. This is the goal. I want to be like Jesus, people may say. Oh, I want to love Jesus more. That's good, and that's great. But those things should have an effect on you. To love Jesus more would show up in loving others more, wouldn't it? If you saw someone or knew someone, if this was true, and someone was always proclaiming, well, they're in love with Jesus, they love their church, they love God, they love the Bible, they love, 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 and they're just always kind of building up that way. Yet this person would is, would, is as mean as they can be. They're hateful. I, I mean, they're short-tempered, and I mean all the time. I mean, they're just ripping people's face off. They're critical. They're judging. They, they're absolutely tearing everything. They hate everything the church does. I, you know, they're never happy. You know, all these things, you've got to see where that would be contrast. Like for someone who loves, it'd be like someone saying, well, I love to cook out, not go to the restaurant cook out, but I love to cook out in the yard. I love to take our grill and I love to cook out. And boy, I, I, I love put, I love hot dogs off the grill and I love steak off the grill. I love chicken off the grill. Ooh, fish grilled. Oh, there's no, or vegetables or even corn of the cob, you know, and, and, and they say all these things and you go, well, how often do you grill out? Oh, I, I don't. I don't even own a grill. Well, time out, my friend. For all the things you say you love, you actually never do. This is what Paul is trying to get us to learn, that we're not just a believer or someone who professes verbally and word only about our love and our commitment to Jesus Christ, it actually shows up in our actions, right? In word and deed. This is so important. And so, you know, it doesn't mean that 
we got to have the same mind as someone has towards us. In other words, as long as it's only reciprocal. So if you love me, I'll love you. If you're kind to me, I'm kind to you. If you're good to me, I'll be good to you. Um, if you're nice to me, I'll be nice to you. That That is not what this means. It doesn't mean I only do if you do. So, you know, I, I, I'll respond when you do. You know, well, if they wouldn't have said, and if they wouldn't have done, then I wouldn't have. No, no, it's time to get out of the sandbox of Christianity, isn't it? It's time to grow up and get on the big playground. And we we don't do that. That's not what we're called to do. We don't love just because you love us. No, we love each other, and we do this because Christ loved us. I am loved by the Lord, and so therefore I should love others. And so Paul is letting us know the thought is that our relationship toward each other, really on both sides, should have the mind of Christ, right? We, we, we should be like-minded, and that is why verse 3 says that like-minded toward, toward another. Now, let me give you a great cross-reference Talking about mutual consideration, talking about among believers and there being a greater sense of unity and family. The wonderful thing about family is that they don't always agree, and that's okay. But strong families and loving families stay together, and they're on the same side. They're on the same team. Doesn't mean they always agree about everything, okay? They're different. I mean, there's different individuals made up in the family. But there's something unified about the family. And Paul says in Philippians 2, 4, and 5, listen to these verses. This is Philippians 2, 4, and 5. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Boy, that sounds familiar to Romans 15, chapter 14 as well. Then verse 5 of Philippians 2. Let this mind be in you. What mind? I got a mind. I'll do whatever I want to. No, Paul says through the word of God, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Okay. We're not talking about your mind, my mind, and the same mind. We've all, we're talking about a different thinking pattern here. And truly, that's what happens to a believer. While patterns are there, thinking patterns and habitual things that we do that need to be replaced, what are we doing? We are being transformed, Paul said, by the renewing of your mind. I've got to change the way I think about things. I've got to change the way I approach things mentally. Because how I do that mentally, it's going to flow into and follow up by my actions. My actions are going to follow that. And so following that, verse of Philippians 2 that I just read you. Paul then follows up with some great things of Philippians 2. Same chapter, but in verses 6 through 8. May I share them with you today? And he says this, this is Philippians 2, 6 through 8. Who being in the form of God, Jesus, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he emptied himself, Jesus, taking upon himself, Jesus, the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the form of a man, he humbled himself, Jesus, and became obedient to death, even death of the cross. This is Jesus. There's no greater example. So the apostle Paul is letting us know that is the mind that we should be striving to have. What? The mind of Christ. The mind of God through Christ that we may with one mind and with one mouth, Romans 15, verse 6, glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Boy, this is the what the Spirit of Christ does in us. It unifies us. It brings us together. Right? I mean, Paul said, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. This is Paul writing in Philippians chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. Listen to this. This is so important. I love this. In Philippians 1, verse 27 and 28, he says, only let your conduct, conversation, okay, how you live, 
be worthy of the gospel of Christ. So do I live in a way that would embarrass or bring and adorn the gospel of Christ? That whether or not I come see you, Paul says, I may hear of your activities and that you are standing fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And here's a warning. Do not be frightened by your adversaries. There will be some that oppose you and the gospel. He says, this is a sign to them of your destruction, but of your salvation. And this from God. This is what God wants for us to be striving together, unified, right? You know, God, yes, and God alone deserves all the glory in our mouths, in our hearts, and in our minds, every part of us. You know, God is not a monster or some big meanie up in heaven, okay, that is cruel and vindictive and can't wait for you to step out of line. That's not the God we serve, okay? The Bible says he's the father of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the only begotten son, the beloved son who gave up Okay, the, the throne of heaven and took the cross, not for his judgment, but for our judgment. The wrath that we deserve, he took upon himself. Okay, that's a good father. That is a good savior. And because the Bible says in John 3, 16, whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is what happened through God and through the son, Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's love. That's goodness. That, that's not meanie. Okay. Sometimes we can be that way, mean and hateful and all the things that the world lives by. We don't walk by that model any longer. And so I think it's so appropriate how I'll close today. And how Paul closed in verse 7 of chapter 15. So listen to this as I close with you. Thanks for being here. In verse 7, may I rehearse this with you of Romans 15. Wherefore, receive. It's an important word. I'm going to read the rest of the verse and come back. Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received. Twice, one verse. Pretty important. Christ received us, we should receive one another to the glory of God. When you look at that word receive, here's the impact of that word. It means to bring into oneself. It means to embrace. It literally means to bring to one close and in embrace. My friend, Let's think of that verse as Paul closed it and this thought and this context here of what we're learning. Wherefore, embrace ye one another. Why? As Christ embraced you and I. The impact has changed, hasn't it? It, it hits home a little bit deeper. Get in close. Lean in on this one now. We love because Christ loved us. We love others because Christ loved us. We receive one another because Christ received us. And it brings glory to God. I want to close with a little uh, poem here. And it comes from John Fawcett. I'm not familiar with him, but I like these words. And... I think it comes from a song. I'm not familiar with it, but listen to this. And I believe through God's grace and his goodness, and as we're reminded of that to us, through the scriptures, we'll be more mindful of that towards others. Here it is, and I close. Thanks for being here today. This is from John Fawcett. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds, is like to that above. Before our Father's throne, we pour our ardent prayers. Our fears, our hopes, our aims are one, our comfort and our cares. We share our mutual woes, 
our mutual burdens bear, and often for each other flows the sympathizing tear. The writer of this song and poem here, these lyrics, if you would, is just kind of bringing home the whole thought of what happens when we walk in love and when we're actually not selfish, but we're selfless. We truly do receive and embrace one another, don't we? We look at each other differently. We see each other differently. We think of each other differently. We respond to each other differently. Well, I want to thank you for joining me today. Know that you are loved and you are prayed for. Don't forget to always share, like, and comment. We'd love for you to do that. And thanks for helping us get the Word of God out. Hope that you'll join me on Thursday. God bless you. Have a wonderful Tuesday afternoon.